Hey, how's it going? I'm Chris with PearsonCopy.com, and I'm here to help your brand make more sales with email. Uh, as part of my 100 email breakdown in 100 days challenge, I'm going to be breaking down an email today from Alpha Furnishing. Uh, this is a welcome email. So this is the first email you get when you sign up for the email list. Uh, they do offer an incentive with a percentage off code. Uh, so with that context, let's go ahead and jump in and break this email down. Uh, their subject line is pretty standard for what most brands uh, use, e-com brands anyway. Uh, welcome to Alpha Furnishing. Um, most brands use a welcome to the family, welcome to the group, welcome to the brand name. Uh, this is pretty typical and standard. Um, like I mentioned in other videos, you can play around with this depending on what you're going with your email strategy for this first email and the rest of your series. You can do a letter from a CEO or founder, a letter from a technician, or uh, welcome to, and if you have a specific name for the group that you're um, having people join as part of your list, you can say welcome to that group name. Um, so yeah, the subject line, pretty standard, pretty straightforward. Um, should be easy to find in the inbox if uh, once people sign up and get the email. Uh, something here with the uh, Alpha's from name and from email address that I found interesting was they, uh, like most brands, they use their brand name, Alpha, uh, but they're from emails, Alpha Furnishing at alphafurnishing.com. So something here I would suggest, um, this isn't the end of the world if they if you do something like this, but what I would suggest is maybe making hello at, info at, um, um, hi at or something a little bit easier to you uh, to remember for the customer or the user uh to to email if they do decide to reply so this this is like i said this isn't in the world but it's something that looks a little bit different and it's a little um maybe hard to remember um or just kind of sounds a little weird so yeah if you use a hello at info at or something easy to remember or use when it comes to email i would suggest doing that here um, let's go ahead and scroll down. So the first thing that we see once we open the email here is the thanks for being a subscriber to Alpha. Uh, no longer interested to unsubscribe. So I, I do appreciate the transparency of saying, hey, if you're looking for that unsubscribe link, here it is right up front. We're not uh, we're not trying to hold your email address hostage. You can definitely jump off this train um, and go do what you want to do if you want to unsubscribe. Um, something I'll note later is that at the bottom of this email, they actually have a button for their unsubscribe, not just a hyperlink to text. So it's super easy to find down below, which, which I would suggest maybe then removing this from the top then. If it's so easy to find down on the footer. Um, it's not hidden. It's not grayed out. It's not um, a few shades different than the background color. They're not hiding the fact that you can leave their list, um, which I think is a great thing. It shows trust and it shows confidence that you're going to enjoy being on their list. Um, so yeah, I would potentially remove this from the top since it's so easy to find down below and just remove one piece of friction of getting into the actual email content. Um, next piece of this email, you have your logo and your brand name um, across on the uh, left of the line here. And then on the right of the line, do you have social icons? So again, I, I, like I've mentioned other other breakdowns, I think that the logo and the um, brand name is clean. It's simple, to, it's simple to consume. It's very, very nice. It's very um, straightforward. So it's easy to consume, say, Alpha Fresh and cool, I'm in the right place, and then keep on scrolling. Uh, with the social icons, I think that it's a little early to actually start showing these. Um, the goal of this email, I would assume, is to get people to um, go to scroll down, find the code, click through the website, and then buy something. So sending them off to social um, probably isn't the best idea when it comes to the first email. I would suggest maybe removing these or putting them in the footer or don't even have them at all in the email because your main goal is to get the, the percentage of people who signed up to get that incentive to the buying action or the buying process as soon as possible. Sending them off to Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, et cetera, could get them distracted. Um, there are millions and millions of feeds there that they could disappear into and forget your brand exists. So I would suggest maybe removing these and test to see how your, um, at least your click through to your website and then your sales go without having these here. If nobody's clicking these anyway, I would simply just remove them um, and not use them if they're not clicking or interested in that. That just tells you your readers of this first email are not going to social. They're looking for whatever else they're clicking on your email if they're clicking at all. So there's some thoughts there. Uh, the next piece here um, is going to be the branded image here. Uh, welcome to Alpha Furnishing. Um, I like this branded image. It's a big image. Uh, something that this email doesn't have is view this email in your browser. So if you're using a lot of heavy design or design layouts, um, when it comes to like graphic elements, you uh, I would suggest you having the view and browser link at the top of this email so people can uh, view that in another tab in their browser. Sometimes email providers... Um, don't show images right away, or it's just easier to read that email in a browser instead of an email inbox when it comes to design and layout. Um, as I've mentioned before, I do prefer plain text when it comes to emails. Um, I, there is, there's a way to do a hybrid where you can design and plain text, um, but plain text typically, um, I, I just prefer it because you get the sales message across, you control the words and the things that are happening in the customer's brain when you're suggesting the sales message and you're trying to get them to click through to something. Um, and also it's a lot easier to build an emotional connection when you have uh, control over the text and the copy that you're actually delivering. So with that being said, um, let's look at this uh, main section here with the welcome headline. 
and the two statements that Alpha makes here in their subheadline. So welcome to Alpha Furnishing. This is just a giant signal saying, hey, reader, you were in the right place. If you signed up and wanted emails from Alpha, you're in the right place. Um, I think that's great. That's a great thing to do to remind people that, hey, you're, you, you clicked in the right email, you're reading the right copy, and you're exactly where you're supposed to be. That is a positive association with your brand. Um, the first, are, I'll read both statements here, and then we'll go over um, some insights or some just some thoughts here. Ergonomically designed with bold aesthetic. Okay, that's great. And then the evolution of remote working is here. So two things are happening here, Ergonom ergonomically designed and bold aesthetic. Those are two features, right? Those are features of alpha furnishing. So, but what I don't see here is uh, the benefit of ergonomically designed and bold aesthetic. So that's something that maybe they could work on um, or maybe test with this subheadline is, what does ergonomically design mean for the customer and how does it benefit them? And then bold aesthetic, what does that do for the customer having a bold aesthetic when it comes to their office furniture? Um, or various other pieces of furniture that Alpha sells. So this is something I think that some brands could do better at is they mention the features, but they don't talk about benefits or how it helps the customer. And then if they want to go the extra step, they can dimensionalize it and say, okay, this is what the product's going to be, uh, do and be like in your life after you start using it, after you purchase it, um, and get, get the customer thinking about and future pacing them into, Hey, this is what it's like to have our chair ergonomically designed. Here's all the, here's the feature. Here are the three different ways that this ergonomic design is going to help you um, if you're using our chair um, and the aesthetic is going to get you attention it's going to keep you comp compliments and people are going to stop at your desk and say hey uh, where did you buy that that's amazing and you're gonna you're gonna get an ego boost or a status a status boost because um, it's bold uh, the bold aesthetic is catching attention right so those are those are different types of benefits that could help the customer and that's something that maybe they could do with this sub headline is just bol uh, boost up the, the use of benefits with these features uh, the evolution of remote work working is here. Um, that is a, I would, I would imagine, I mean, I just say it's a general statement, right? It's like, yeah, remote working is here. It's, it's been coming and it's going to keep happening as the internet becomes more ubiquitous and people, uh, transition into, um, especially office work into more remote positions. So this is a general truth or a general statement. Um, I would try and tie this if they want to keep this angle or this concept, maybe that's what they use for their subject line is, Hey, Alpha knows remote work is here. This is how we help or something to that effect of uh, keeping that concept or angle of how they're addressing remote work for the customer and their consumer. Um, so that could be another way to pull the lead out of this head, this sub headline, which is not quite buried. It's it's in the top of the email, uh, but use that in the subject line, the concept angle of the entire email, uh, which I don't think they do um, uh, as much as they could. Uh, they could use the remote work angle um, as just basically the theme of the email and use that to, to influence all the copy. So uh, with that being said, I think this upper section is gorgeous. I think it's a great aesthetic. Um, and I think that they put a lot of time and effort into this and I think it's uh, probably doing well for them. So those are just some insights with the headline and the header section here with the branded image. On the next section here, we have the hello and welcome um, and the mission statement section. So hello and welcome, it's another positive association. Uh, you're saying welcome up top here and then you're saying welcome again. You could probably just say hello and be just fine. Um, uh, they did, um, I believe Alpha asked for your first name. If they don't, then maybe that's why they're not using the personalization piece. If they do, um, uh, if they don't, then this works perfectly fine, right? So hello and welcome. And then they mention uh, their mission statement. So this is something that, um, so let's just read through this mission statement and then I can give you a little insight here. Um, I think that this is friendly. It, it's a good greeting. It's, it's got a little personality. Hello and welcome. Um, our mission is to provide the new world of trending healthy work styles, whether at home or work. Now you can be trendy everywhere. This is alphaversioning.com. So, Here's the main insight here. Uh, this is definitely the mission statement, but the evolution of remote working is here. And then we're trying to help you be trendy. So those two can work well together if you tie them together, but there's no tie between these two. Um, there, that's a, that's a pretty big leap when it comes to connecting those two ideas. Um, maybe I'm underestimating the customer, but remote work and being trendy with your office furniture, those are two different motives or two different desires, right? So the evolution of remote work is convenience or ease of use, right? I'm, I've got to build my new office or put new furniture in my office and uh, basically get ready to do remote work. That's a different desire. It's more of a functional ease use desire or motive or um, um, uh, yeah, basically desire. And then you have your, now you can be trendy everywhere desire, uh, more of a status or social status or um, um, when you say social, social empowerment, right? It's like these two desires can work together. They are parallel. They can be in the same person. The same person can be desiring them, but they, they don't align with the concept of the theme of the email, um, from a higher, like high level strategy standpoint, right? So like pick the evolution of remote work and make that the theme of this email or pick, we want to make you trendy. Um, they might be trying to touch on those two different desires. Cause that's exactly what their dream customer is looking for. They're trying to build their office and they want it to be trendy. 
that's totally fine. But I would suggest you pick one or the other and make, maybe make two emails or address them, um, address them in the copy and tie them together. So it's really easy to understand that just because you have to rebuild or build a new office or buy new things for your office, um, you still can be trendy when you buy from us. So there's some thoughts there. Um, the next section here is the code. I like this because it's, it's big. It's obvious you, there's a very, very unlike, um, unlikely chance that you're going to miss this. Um, so this is great. 10% off your purchase, click your shop now, automatically apply your code to checkout. Um, so something I like here is even though this code is a little, um, it's got uh, random characters, um, Alpha went the extra mile and said, hey, this automatically applies to your checkout. Um, with the videos I've done so far, there are very few brands. I think there's only one or two that I've noticed that actually say, hey, we automatically apply this. You don't have to remember this. Um, on the flip side, though, if they say, let's say they see this on their desktop, um, on their computer, like I'm looking at now on mine, but I want to go buy my phone or my tablet or I'm sitting on the couch watching a movie and be like, oh, yeah, I was going to look at Alpha Furnishing and buy their stuff. And I have my tablet next to me and I pull that up. Now I have to go find this code. Or if I don't have that email connected to my tablet, which most people do, but if I don't, um, I have to get up, go to my computer, get that information, come back, sit down and buy. That's a lot of friction. So something I would suggest is instead of having a random character string of characters here, I would create a um, easily to remember, uh, easy to remember code that you can use pretty much anywhere on any device at any time. Uh, something like alpha 10 or uh, remote 10 or something like that to go with the theme of here or trendy, trendy alpha 10 or something like that. Something easy to remember, right? Um, and that just reduces friction for people to use that if they're not on the device that they got this code with. Um, and then finally, uh, we have a few more sections. Um, so something here that I haven't seen on a lot of uh, brand emails that offer codes, is they don't offer their expiration dates, right? So this one is running 7-7-2022, um, uh, 1159 PM Pacific. Uh, additional terms that may apply and that's all in the footer, right? But having this here of like when this expires and at what time actually creates some urgency. Um, it gets people to act now instead of later. Um, you can do stuff that has a shorter, a shorter time window or duration of expiration, like 24 hours, 72, whatever. And you can set that up in the back end to expire per customer. Once they receive it, um, you don't have to do like a month long thing or, um, anything like that. So, um, this one is, as I'm looking at it now, it looks like it is a 24 hour thing, um, or within by midnight of the same night. So they are putting a pretty strict, like 12 hour, uh, exp expiration or less on this, um, which is great. I think that creates urgency, like I said, and all the conditions are below. And then the last few sections here, we have the best sellers, which is great because if they have the code, and they're not really sure what the shop, they might scroll down and say, oh, okay, this is what I'm kind of looking for. They have different um, accessories and things like that. Um, and you can buy. Um, the next section here is what I would say is reasons to buy from alpha. You have free delivery, easy to assemble and 38 returns. Um, a few notes here that I have for it for this section, um, your free delivery mentions the exact benefits. So a free fully trackable delivery service on all orders. So that's a pretty good, that's a pretty good, um, feature with, um, with a decent benefit, right? The benefit here would be you can, um, free fully trackable delivery service on all orders. Yeah. So that's a pretty good benefit. Like you, you know exactly where your order is at, um, at all times. So you could potentially add that here and make it even dimensionalize that benefit, um, easy to assemble. So, uh, make sure you have the best experience with the assembling process. So best experience with the assembling process as general, it's not very specific. So what I would do to boost this is like you have the feature of easy to assemble. The benefit of this is spend less than however much time it is to actually assemble this or don't have to call um, call somebody to come over and help. You can do it yourself with one tool and we deliver that tool with, with the product. Um, so yeah, just benefit and dimensionize this a little bit might actually get some more pull when people read it. Um, and then you have 30 day returns, which is pretty straightforward. Um, the one thing here is I, uh, this is a feature benefit. It's pretty straightforward. I think it's clear. The one thing I didn't see in this email is a guarantee of like after 30 days, we'll give you your money, to, money back or like no risk for you. Um, you can pay, start with payments and then pay the rest uh, after the first month or something like that. Just some kind of guarantee to continue to remove risk from the customer. They are buying a piece of furniture or an accessory, accessory furniture from you, uh, from the brand. So that's something that people are maybe getting used to still is buying furniture online. Um, and then finally you have your collections, which is similar to the best sellers, but this is more of just like a grouping of things as opposed to specific items. Uh, you have your social icons again, which again, like above, I would say remove the ones that are above and just leave the ones down here, remove them entirely. Um, just because if you're trying to get them the code to click through and shop, you don't want to go to social instead of your website. And then you have your terms and details here in the footer, which is the code terms and details, uh, contact in, um, email, your standard footer information. And like I said before, this is a, this is a big unsubscribe button. It's pretty easy to find and you're not going to miss it. It's not hidden somewhere in this text up here. Um, like some brands do, uh, which I think is kind of shady. This is a very transparent brand and they, they just say, Hey, if you want to leave, here's a button. So I suggest removing that from the top of the email. 
With that being said, um, this is uh, this is a breakdown for the brand alpha. This is a welcome email if you sign up for the list. And as part of my 100, 100 emails in 100 day challenge, I'm breaking down these emails and um, hopefully sharing some insights that you can take back to your brand to make more sales with email. Uh, in the meantime, go ahead and check out my other videos on YouTube where I break these videos down um, and take those take a look at.